Hey ladies, it's Katie here with another Live and Learn, and I am super excited. I am always excited because we have such wonderful ladies, but today, today we have Brandy Powell with Village of the Valley, and I am super excited to speak with you because you are changing lives out there, girl. I'm trying. <laughs> you are. Tell us a little bit about you. So I am an older mom. I've got a 14-year-old daughter, so that puts me in my early 40s. No shame. Absolutely not. And uh, I've been married for about 17 years now. We've got an awesome little three-person family. Uh, got a black lab. We hike our mountain by us. We're just like chill people, so we don't do a ton of stuff. But it's all about family, you know, like most people. Of course, living the dream, my friends. <laughs> I love it. Tell me a little bit about what you do. So I am the founder of an organization called Village of the Valley, and we refer to it oftentimes as Votive, just to make it easy. And Votive is a collaboration of transformational life coaches who work with women all over the valley from west side to east side, uh, just to try to come alongside them and help them transform, help them make change in their life in whatever area they're struggling in. Usually it has a lot to do with relationships or with handling their emotions. A lot of times it's self-care and what self-care really means. Uh, and even the spiritual component of life. So uh, we bring them into our program and we work out a plan to meet their goals and uh, we charge ahead together. Awesome. I love it. When did you get started? Well, right after my daughter was about three years old, uh, everything kind of went bonkers, uh, myself included in that. I had uh, one day, I was trying like so hard to be the perfect mom, um, a little too hard, I think in an effort to kind of redeem my own childhood. So I thought I would do everything perfect with my kids so that I wouldn't do the same thing that was done to me. I had done that for about three years, ran really, really hard, took care of everything, ran the household, worked part-time jobs, and then it just kind of all came to like a crashing halt one day where I laid on the couch for like 14 hours and cried, and it was time to get me the help that I needed. Thankfully, my family was around me, and I ended up going to a mental health facility for three days. I stayed there, I got stable, I uh, got on a lot of meds, uh, and then I was able to go to a wellness center down in Tucson for about a week, which created like the time and the space that I needed to figure out my plan. Uh, the reality was that my whole life I had been taking my pain, putting it in a box, and shoving it way down. And that was no longer working, and my body was done doing that, my soul was done doing that. Um, and so the new plan was to come back home, continue the medication to get stable, get into a ton of counseling and like bring it down from a level 10 to like maybe a level three <laughs> to be optimistic. And so I did that. And for years, I just practiced bringing it down and taking care of myself in a different kind of a way. I released a lot of my expectations that truthfully I had put on myself. Mm -hmm. uh, and with the counseling, I was really able to voice all of the pain, the pain from my childhood with the emotional and verbal abuse, the pain from later on in life in my early teens and twenties being in a very physically violent, sexually violent relationship. Um, I was able to release all that and air it out, and that's what I needed. And so I did that for a few years, and then right around, I don't know, I was needing more of a change. I knew that there was something new coming into this journey that I was on, and I found this small support group that did healing work for women who've been through trauma and abuse. And I thought, you know, that sounds great. And I know a lot of women around me who could really use this, so maybe I'll go and do this for them, not really thinking, oh, maybe you'll get something out of it. Right. I sure got a lot out of it. Uh, it was really helpful in figuring out what abuse was, really labeling it, understanding all the effects left behind from it, 
uh, and then how to move forward and what forgiveness would look like for others and what it would look like to forgive myself. And I think the biggest thing that I came to realize out of all of that was that I was actually uh, hurting my husband because of all of the hurt that I had had happened to me. And I didn't think I was, but the way I was talking to him, the way I was treating him. Uh, so I went through a process of healing my own stuff and then trying to heal some of the damage that I had done um, as a result of not knowing how to do differently or how to do better. And we worked through that, which was great. Um, and so then a few years after being part of that working one-on-one -on -one in that support group system, I just knew I had to continue to carry this forward on my own and build my own organization. And so that's what I started doing a couple of years ago. And the most important part to me was that all of the women I've known over the years, money has always been a problem. Money has always been an issue. Uh, you may be able to relate to this, but you know, I'm the last one who gets what's left over. Everybody's, the kids have got stuff that has to happen. The husband's got stuff that he's got to do with work stuff. Well, if there's something left, then maybe I'll get it. And certainly paying for a life coach, which sounds very bougie, uh, it's just not going to happen, right? And I didn't want that to stop people, so we just took that out of the mix. So all of our services are free at Votive. Uh, you don't pay for anything when it comes to a workshop or a small support group or the one-on-one -on -one coaching. When you're part of our program, you get those things handed to you because that's not going to be a barrier. And so what we're doing now is we've got all of these wonderful women who have come forward and said, you know, I am ready for change uh, and I need to know how to do that well. Help me with my goals. And so that's, that's what we do. We, we get them to the place of knowing what their goals are and then achieving them together with a partner on the other side. I am in love with it, and I can't believe that you are able to offer such an, such a needed service for free, which totally blows my mind, but my goodness, thank you on behalf of all women that need your service. Thank you so much. And there's a lot of stuff in what you just said, and I got the chills from head to toe a couple of times. So let me just take you back a little bit when you were explaining kind of why you got into what you did. Do I understand it correctly that there's there's kind of this space between? So there's like, um, you know, you're dealing with things as it seems like you've had some trauma as a child and as a, as a young adult, and then that stops or you get out of that situation, but there's that space between that you suppress and you're not necessarily um, figuring yourself out. You're not necessarily figuring out maybe emotional triggers, things like that, and maybe why you treat people the way that you treat them. Because to you, it seems normal. This is how you were raised. Exactly. Yeah. It's, I grew up in chaos. Chaos to me feels familiar. It feels normal. Uh, so when there's a lot of drama, a lot of craziness going on, I'm like right at home. Mm -hmm. Even today, I am like right at home in it. But uh, it isn't healthy for me. It, it actually creates a lot of anxiety and it actually makes me pretty angry. Uh, for me, anger has always been my go-to emotion. So all those times of the injustice of what was going on in my childhood or the injustice of what happened in my relationship, it was this intense anger and rage that would then come out. For me, I didn't turn it inward. I turned it outward on everybody else. Uh, and that's very destructive. Nobody really wants to be around somebody who rages, right? It's not very safe for anybody to be around. And yeah, those things hadn't gone away no matter how much I didn't talk about them, no matter how much I denied them. Sometimes I would even deny that some of that stuff happened. Um, all because I didn't really know what to do with that. I wasn't taught here's emotional intelligence, here's how you learn empathy, here's, you know, we talk about our, we don't talk about our feelings, you right. know, it's much better to just go off alone and be quiet. Uh, but it really isn't a lot better to go off alone and be quiet because that stuff is in you and it will come out somewhere. Oftentimes we say it comes out sideways, right? It doesn't come out where it needs to at having a relationship with the other person and trying to work through the problems. No, it comes out over here on my kid, 
who I'm real pissed off at because they didn't get in the seat quick enough to buckle the seatbelt, you know? Mm -hmm. So it, it's not like you're, anybody can do a really great job of containment. I know women who are in their 80s who still struggle with so much of the pain of their past. And it's hard when you get older and older and older to really dive into that stuff because what's the point, right? What's the point? Who cares? But what I've noticed is that in those relationships, there's always walls and always defenses. And it blocks relationship. And truthfully, a lot of the pain and abuse we've experienced has happened in relationship with other people. And that is the way that those things get healed, is in relationship with other people also. So it's kind of crazy to think about it like that, but you need other people to help you heal too. Right. It makes, it makes a lot of sense to me. And as you're raging and not figuring yourself out and it's coming out sideways and all of that. So not only are you potentially destroying other relationships, potentially destroying or not really getting them off on a good foot with your children. Um, and you know, they're going to start maybe mimicking this as adults in their relationships, but it, the physical stress is also a big deal. I feel like, because when you're putting yourself through that, it's like, um, you know, you're being chased by a saber tooth tiger almost, you know, if we think way back in the caveman days and that's big time stress. And what we know about physical stress is there's where all your, you know, not all, I'm not a doctor, blah, 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 but whatever, but you know, diseases and, and lots of things and, you know, lots of physical ailments come out of that. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, think about just anxiety alone. I know that when I'm stressed or when I'm struggling even with something simple or more basic, I mean, I get the whole stomach dump, you know, where all this anxiety just pours into my stomach or I'll get a headache and I just can't think clearly, you know, and I think so much of what I experienced was because of the chaos and the anxiety that I was living in on a daily basis. Uh, I became like this, almost like this adrenaline kind of a junkie, sort of. Uh, you know, I, I often will be like in the car, even to this day, I'll be in the car driving. And out of nowhere, I'll start thinking about something just devastating happening, you know. And I've got to jump in and somehow fight something off. I mean, crazy things. But what happens when I start playing that in my mind is physiologically, my body is responding, right? cortisol and adrenaline and things that get me back into that survival place, which really I, you know, grew up in and really fit with, it really fits with me. That all just starts going and happening. And I have to really work physiologically to bring myself back down and bring myself into this more quiet sort of parasympathetic state of my body where I've done breathing where maybe I've played music, like real nice, quiet, classical music to kind of tone it down. Okay. Um, do a number, I have a number of tools that I use to kind of just tell myself, Brandy, hold on a second, you're like going way crazy here, and all you're doing is driving to pick up your daughter from school. <laughs> Nothing is happening. But when you've experienced that for such a long period of time, you know, you're really accustomed to it, and you have to try to work to come out of that space. Gotcha. Yeah. It makes so much sense. So, so your service really kicks in, not necessarily in the middle of the abusive situation, more so after. So, you know, an example, a mom, a woman, a lady has gotten out of the situation and then she comes to see you. Am, am I right there? Yeah, we're definitely not crisis services. We can help a woman who is in the moment, who needs help by giving her some resources to direct her to. And there are many great organizations out there that will help women when they're in the middle of it. Uh, there's even apps that you can download um, very carefully onto your phone that can give you resource information or come up with a plan to get out of those very scary situations. Um, but yes, we don't handle anything like that. We aren't equipped to do that. We're like maybe second or even third level kind of care. Okay. Really a woman who would come to us maybe has had some counseling in her past. Uh, that would be really helpful because that shows kind of a willingness to uh, explore some things about self, right? Good point. 
and also uh, you know somebody who has maybe they don't have a lot of counseling but maybe they're really into sort of self-help and that's like been their thing they always read self-help books or uh, something like that those would be the women who are really ready to say okay I've got things I want to do that are different and you just need help with that partner by my side to reach those goals gotcha so your service does, a, does best with a little bit of groundwork first but somebody could get in touch with you connect with you follow you and perhaps get some resources if they're in a situation that they need to get out of quickly. absolutely awesome what would you or what do you find is the most difficult part of overcoming an abusive relationship or situation for most people oh that's a hard one is that a big question <laughs> Well, there's lots of factors, and I can only speak to my own experience, and I'll do that. Uh, for me, I was terribly afraid to be alone. Uh, I was terribly afraid no one was going to love me, that there was nobody else out there for me. Uh, you know, finances didn't really play a part in that for me because I had my own home. I was financially independent, and the person that I was with at that time, he didn't he worked sporadically, so it wasn't like financially I really needed him, but I know for a fact that that's a biggie that keeps women locked into situations. Right. I also didn't have a child with him, and so that's another one, right? That gets super complicated when you have children together. Um, so I had a, an easier time, you know, thinking about those circumstances in, in order to get out, but yet it still took me. I was in that abusive relationship for eight years. Wow. So I know it takes a long time and I know you have to have a plan. What I know for sure is you must have a support system around you of people who are safe that you can go to when you need them. Uh, sometimes we wear those people out and then they're not the right ones. So find the ones that are in it for the long haul, even if it's just one or two people. Uh, that can come alongside you and be there for you. Uh, that's, I, that was critical. For me, I had a lady at work who was a grandmotherly type lady. She would listen to all this chaos that I was going through in my relationship at that time. And she just loved on me. She'd buy me lunch sometimes. She would pick me up for work if I didn't have the car. Uh, and she would listen. And, you know, six to eight months of that, her and I had built this really strong friendship. And she actually helped me uh, transition out of that relationship. So having some one or two people around you that will be willing to do that when you're ready uh, is really key. It's important, yeah, sounds like it. And you know, something that I learned a, a little while back that I didn't really realize is there's such a thing in relationships as financial abuse too, right? Um, or, more like I'm going to keep all the finances away from you so you can't do anything. And I feel like there are some ladies that are in that particular situation. Are there resources if they're like finding themselves in a spot where they need to get out and they don't have a penny to their name? Absolutely. There really are. Uh, one in particular, uh, I'll just give you one because a lot of times it's not really safe to be sharing that information out there. Um, but if they reach out to me directly, I can provide them with more thorough information. But you can always call 211. 211 is a resource line for women in crisis. Uh, and that, they help you get to any, you know, shelters, food, basic need help, uh, in immediate crisis, I need to get out today kind of stuff, uh, and free counseling, uh, all kinds of, all kinds of resources are out there and available and good people are really running those organizations, some of them I know, uh, and who really do want to help and make a difference. So you're not alone. Thank you for that. And I believe that, correct me if I'm wrong, is every QT a safe zone? I don't know if every QT is, but you know what, that's a good point. I've noticed a lot of them do have that. Yeah, so if you're in a situation and there's a QT on the corner, get over there. There's good people there to help you. I've heard that a bunch. Um, Gosh, I, could, I feel like I could talk to you all day. Uh, what's the one thing that you want our listeners to remember about your services? I think there the hurdle is I'm nervous about reaching out. I'm nervous about actually taking that first step. 
you know, a lot of anxiety sort of spills up because it's, what am I going to do? Do I have to actually do something about this? Am I really going to face this kind of stuff? Um, it's always that first step. And a lot of times, you know, we've, because we've been putting ourselves on the back burner, we, we, we just continue in that habit and that pattern and don't take a risk and don't take a chance. But if you keep doing the same thing you've always done, you're always going to get the same result, right? So taking a chance and taking a risk uh, can really be worth it. And since there isn't an expense, there is no real excuse at that point, right? You've just got to be able to put yourself at least on the same playing field as everybody else, you know? Absolutely. How can our listeners follow you and connect with you and all of that jazz? Yeah, well, we have a website you can go to villageofthevalley.org, so you can find us there. And we're also on Instagram and we're on Facebook and you can shoot us a direct message on Facebook and we're really quick about replying. We do have some client openings available right now. Uh, and we'll also be accepting brand new clients during summertime too where the schedule really starts back over again. So if you wanted to uh, wait till the kids are out of school to start, you can do that as well. Awesome, awesome ladies. Get in touch with Brandy. Brandy, is there anything else you'd like to add before we run today? I just want to say how grateful I am that anybody would even be interested in the idea that they have enough value, that they do matter enough to even explore the idea of wondering about the things that they want to change. Uh, it's, it may seem a little self-indulgent. It's not because you don't really realize how much of an impact that you have on all those people around you. And when you come forward and you begin to work through and find change and transformation in yourself, it affects everybody else in really good, healthy ways. And I just encourage you to take that leap of faith and to know that doing something for you is not selfish. It's actually helping those very people that you love so much uh, when you are the person that begins the process uh, of getting healthier. Totally agree. Thank you for sharing today, Brandy. Absolutely. Thank you, Katie. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.